WordPress has something it calls the famous 5-minute install. This is the step-by-step -step manual process for installing WordPress on a server. If we come to the WordPress.org codex, we could see that on their installation page, they have a section that explains the process for this installation. It includes downloading WordPress, creating a database, making some configurations, uploading all of our content, and then running the WordPress installation script. Let's walk through this process now, starting with going to the main WordPress.org website, click on the blue Download WordPress button, click on Download again, and then make sure that we have the copy of WordPress unzipped so that we can easily upload it to our server. In order to upload to our server, we're going to be using a piece of software called FileZilla, which you could find at filezillaproject.org with a hyphen. The benefit of FileZilla is that it's free and that it works for both the Mac and PC. Once you have FileZilla downloaded and installed on your computer, go ahead and open it up and you'll find at the top an option for the host, username, and password. This should be the same information that you use to log into cPanel, starting with the URL of your site, and then the username and password you received. If you have any problems getting your FTP information, just contact your hosting provider and they'll be able to give it to you. Once we have our information set up, we could log in, and now we see that on the right side of our screen, we have our remote site or our server. And down here, we could see all of the folders that appear. It's important to know that when working with uploading files, that you're going to want to put all of your files inside of the public HTML folder. We'll click into that, find our WordPress folder on our local computer, and drag all of the contents inside of this package over onto our server. One of the great things about FTP software is that it lets you easily drag and drop files from your local computer to your live server. This process is going to take a little while, so we'll move on to setting up the database. To do this, we'll come back into cPanel and then search for MySQL until we find the MySQL database wizard. When you're picking a database name, you want to use something short and unique. I'm going to use WPTH for WordPress Treehouse. Next, we have to pick a username that will be associated and granted access to the database. For this, I'm just going to use the same name for now and enter in a password. We'll go ahead and create this user. And then in the final step, it'll ask us what privileges we want this user to have. We're going to click All. So we now have our database set up and we're ready to go back and check on our files. Once the upload process is complete, we can come back to our site and add wp-admin to the end. Adding wp-admin to a WordPress site is how we access the control panel. When we get there, we should see the beginning of the installation process, which we'll start clicking through now. On this page, it's telling us that we're going to need the database information that we just set up, which we could enter in here. In our case, our database name and user is the same, and it's important to note here that when you enter in your password, it is going to appear in plain text, so it's important that if you're working in an unsecure environment that you remember this. Unless your hosting provider tells you otherwise, the database host will likely stay the same. For table prefix, it's not a bad idea for security reasons to slightly modify this. In our case, we're going to say, WPTH underscore instead of just WP underscore. 
you do likely still want to have an underscore and just a few characters designating the table prefix. WordPress now has all the information it needs from you, and we could run the install script. It's now going to ask for some information about the site, like the title and your login information. Since this is a demo site in development, I'm going to uncheck the box that automatically submits our site to search engines and does a little bit of work to prevent them from trolling our site. We could see now that we have WordPress successfully installed and we can click to log in. And we could see that we've now successfully installed WordPress.